All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, January 2024. 2023 is in the rearview mirror. Um, kind of crazy that our 50th anniversary is behind us, but I know I'm happy to have it behind us. It was a lot for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> so now we get to look forward to 2024. So today, um, oh, I need to see. Do we have our new program coordinator on? I don't see her on. All right, well, I have a couple of announcements and I wanted to first start by welcoming Caitlin May to our coordinator crew. Um, she is the new Pierce County Master Gardener Coordinator. And I thought she was gonna be on, but I'm not seeing her. I don't see Jim either. So that makes me think they're probably meeting. Uh, Caitlin comes to us with about five or so years of experience um, in Girl Scouts. So she was uh, the, I'm not really sure the region name, but it was Eastern Washington, or yeah, to Wenatchee, and then all, Idaho as well, managing uh, cookie sales for that whole area uh, for, the, for the Girl Scouts, uh, Girl Scouts Association working with parent volunteers and and Girl Scouts. I think she's going to be a great addition to our team and we're looking forward to having her. Uh, Caitlin, if you're on, I don't think you are though. You wanna say anything? I don't see her on here. All right, well, I will be working with Caitlin um, fairly regularly to onboard her as well as Jim Croft will support her onboarding. Um, I also want to let you know that gardening in Washington State has a new look, and it's not uh, it's not its own URL anymore. We moved it over to our Master Gardener um, page, and let's see. I want to um, show you what that looks like. Yeah, right there. Um, so it's on our, uh, under resources, Debbie moved everything over because the, the original site was uh, on a, on a, um, server that was being retired. So now it's here. The old URL still works. We have a, uh, a, a redirect that will take you here, but eventually we'll have to shut that down. So please bookmark this new address for yourselves but it's all in here. So take a look at that. Debbie's done some work on uh, so, sort of reorganizing it. And I haven't looked closely at that to kind of, um, oh yeah, so she tried to uh, put things in different categories once you're in. So thanks Debbie for that. Hopefully that will be helpful. And I wanted to make sure that you all saw that that was um, updated. Um, and I also want to talk for a second about the Northwest Flowering Garden Festival coming up here uh, in the next, I guess, I think we move in on the 13th. It's the 14th through something of February. And uh, just a couple of things that we need your help on to promote our county programs while we're at the show. I think um, most of you probably uh, have already, well, I know that all of this information has gone out um, to the program coordinator listserv, um, but I want to show you again, should have, let's see. I'm having trouble getting to where I want to be. Okay, so I want to show you some of the things that, um, so we have a join us page on our Master Gardener website. What are you guys seeing? Are you seeing the join us page? Okay, thank you. Um, on our Master Gardener website, there's a join us page. 
And at the show last year, we had a lot of questions about how to become a Master Gardener volunteer. We will have, uh, oh, there's Caitlin and Jim. Great. Uh, welcome. <laughs> um, at the show this year, we're going to have um, a brochure and some uh, business cards that we can hand to people who are interested in becoming master gardeners. And one of those, the brochure on how to become a master gardener is gonna take them to this page. And this is the state become a WSU extension master gardener page. It has high level information on what it mean, what you need to do to become a master gardener. We've added specific links and I haven't, I did not check this ahead of time, so I don't know where, I mean, I know that this goes to how to become a master gardener. So this one looks like it's updated, but make sure that um, before the show starts, which is February 14th, please make sure that this page on your website, because this goes directly to the Benton Franklin website, how to become a master gardener. Please make sure that this website is up to date because we will be driving people to that page for you. Also, um, we are promoting educational events. And so we want to make sure that educational events get uh, registered with our events page. You should have received an email with a a link to a form where you could submit your events. That's what this page looks like. As soon as I'm done talking, I'll put all of these links into the chat for you. But they did come across in an email to the Master Gardener Listserv. So if you put your plant sales and your educational outreach events into this form, we will be driving people to uh, an events page. So this one is the events page for educational outreach. And you can see that some counties have already entered a little bit of information. So we'll have, we can add your events into here. And then we'll also add, I thought I, we'll also add plant sales. Um, I'm not seeing the, that I have the plant sale uh, page open. But so in that registration page, just go ahead and use this uh, form to put in your educational events and your plant sale events, and uh, we will be promoting those events for you from the show. That makes sense to everybody? Okay. Now I'm going to try to screen. I have a question, Jennifer. Uh huh. Um, these fundraising events are definitely, you know, the president of the foundation could put those in, but the educational events, uh, that has to be someone else, correct? Uh, anybody can enter that, put any information into that form. So the form just goes to Debbie and then Debbie does the work to get it on the sites. Okay, because so I was trying to keep the foundation and the program separate in our two counties. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, keeping it separate I, is for, in understanding, right? We want our volunteers to understand the difference between program and foundation. But when it comes to our events, we're partners. We want to work together. So it's important for us to be promoting both of the on both sides. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. our, our president of our foundation had that, asked me that question. Okay, so, and then where those events, um, the events will get posted onto the state foundation and the program page. So they're going both places. So not, Things like CE you don't want listed there, just just events? Correct. Like uh, educational outreach events for our public, the gardening okay. public. All right. So now um, I think I want to turn it over. 
I'm going to make sure I'm really having screen issues today. Sorry about that, you guys. Um, so now I want to turn over to Mike Peranto. Mike is a uh, volunteer in Pierce County. He was part of a, um, a panel that spoke at the All Extension Conference in summer of 2022 in Tri-Cities on uh, climate change. Laurel Moulton and Tim Kohlhoff were also a part of that. I think there was some one other person, but I can't remember who. So at the Advanced Education Conference this past year, Mike and a couple others spoke on climate change and the Master Gardener role in climate change and asked for a group of people who were interested in supporting it. And uh, he got a huge response and now we're creating some pretty cool things that I asked him to come talk to you all about today. Mike, thanks for being here. Thanks, Jennifer. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Um, as Jennifer said, Mike Peranto, uh, Master Gardener volunteer out of Pierce County, and I'm part of what we're calling a climate change group that, importantly for you guys, it spans the entire state. So one of the whole notions of the group is that we're not stopping at county lines. In fact, we're not stopping at state lines. We have two Canadians as part of the group as well. So kind of a little picture here. The uh, this is colorized CO2. It doesn't stop at our borders, so we figure neither should we. The goal is to put together as many people who will care about climate change together to work on projects so that we uh, make more rapid progress in tackling climate change. So I'm going to I'm asking for two things here today. I'm going to just briefly explain the group and then make my two asks. OK, so the group itself meets once a month on Zoom. Uh, Mid-month, Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m., so those who are working can show up. We try to make it, well, we make it go no longer than an hour, sometimes shorter. And basically, we share initiatives we're working on and happenings from around the state so that people know, get better understanding of what's going on. Um, kind of, but the meat of the meeting is to identify and discuss projects that we want to work on as master gardeners and bring them statewide. And uh, to do that, we created a little website. So I'm I'm on the foundation, I'm the admin on the foundation. So I was able to just do it on the Paris County site. Um, at some point in time, I'll explain it and we'll, we'll merge into two, move it into two parts to the state site, but that's where we sit right now. You're all welcome to go check it out. Password, all lowercase. MGWB, that's Master Gardeners Without Borders, and the year we started, 2023. So if you want to go there, if you do, this is the page you will see. And let me see if I can get us back to full screen. Like that, okay? So again, I'm real quickly talk about the goal group we have when we're meeting. And the Zoom link right there so that anybody can who is onto the site can just join in. We uh, keep notes. We record all the meetings so people can catch up. And then we get into the, the meat of the session, which is working on projects. And I'm here today to really talk to you about this project, a presentation library for Speakers Bureau. But before I dive in on that, I'll just some of the other ones that are kind of bubbling about. Um, and the 2024 AEC is going to have a climate change track. So one of our members is part of the AEC group and is working on that track and regularly checks in with members of the of our little group. So that if he needs more help, we can uh, people can raise their hand and join in. We have uh, a woman, Sandy Bauer, who wants to start working on some programming, climate change specific programming for children's and youth gardening. Um, we have an education initiative going on, and we got another one. We got no leader on this, but we want to start looking at clinic kits. So if you get the feel, you can see kind of, hey, there's something to add to clinics. There's something to add to our youth gardening. There's uh, education, and there's something to add to our speakers bureau. So we're basically trying to put together uh, projects that enhance our climate change IQ, if you will. Uh, across the state and penetrating all of our kind of core program offerings, wherever they make sense. So I'm gonna talk just again, real quickly. Here's the first one that we're furthest along on is this uh, 
basically a digital library of presentations uh, that we're going to get basic, I don't want to use the term peer reviewed, but they essentially go through the peer review process is probably going to be called a w, WSU EMG approved presentations. So that where we properly have make sure the science is right and make sure we do the uh, crediting of all the source materials properly. Once we've done that, we will move it to the state program site. Like uh, Jennifer just gave you the demo of, of the moving uh, the last piece, the last set, set of information to the site, we'll be moving this information to that site. But for right now, it's here. Uh, we've been able to round up a dozen climate change presentations, one on science, one on the resilient yard, gardening and climate change, veggie gardening, native plants, pollinators, citrus tree gardening, water-wise gardening, fire-resistant landscape, and on and on and on. So we got a dozen presentations that we're we're trying to standardize and move to the state site. And when we do that, there'll be kind of six versions of each one. There'll be a Western Washington version and an Eastern Washington version. Uh, optionally, but hopefully there'll be a Zoom recording from the original author so that you can see how the original author presented it. Uh, this is in PDF, so that you can just check it on the site real quickly, then go to the Zoom. And if you're interested, or if you have uh, if your master gardener is interested in giving this presentation, we'll offer the PowerPoint version of it so they can download it to their desktop and modify it as they see fit and become a presenter for your county. Okay. So that's that's the project that we're working on right now. We're um, right in the beginning of the approval process. Let's see if I can get out of here and go back to the PowerPoint. And uh, we have six, where did that go? Sorry, folks. There we go. We had uh, six members of the WSU staff who've agreed to go do this uh, approval process. The ver first presentation is, went through the first pass, and we've spotted a few errors in our process, so we're working on cleaning that up. But once we start having, once the approval approved presentations come out of the pipeline. Uh, when we move to the state site, it'll be under uh, a section that we're tentatively calling Speakers Central. So the notion would be that your Speakers Bureau leads can go here as well as any master gardener. And we'll have the library that I just showed you. We'll also have documented the approval process so that new presentations can just go directly to Speaker Central. You could submit the presentation there and have it go through the uh, approval process. We'll have an administration section where we start standardizing some of the forms that the presenters use, like evaluation forms. And um, we're thinking of a reporting section that the Speakers Bureau leads would go to for any standardized kind of reporting between county and the state. So that that's what we're working on. We're trying to have it up and operational by April because that's kind of the, the big season for uh, people asking for speakers bureau presentation. And 2024 will be about growing the number of presenters, qualified presenters who can present this material. Um, so that's what we're doing to request, any questions you've got, I'm open to them, but the two requests I have a view of, if you know anybody that is interested in your county that's interested in climate change, my email address is at the bottom. It's just my name. Send, send me their contact information, and I'll add them to our little group so that they can be given notifications of this monthly meeting and attend if they, if they choose to. So uh, we want EMGs with climate change interest. Also, for the, I know a lot of you have training classes, and if, if you have a slot on climate change in your intern training, if you could slip in a mention of this there, that would be great. And I'm more than happy, to, if it's a Zoom base, I'm more than happy to do something like this for the group if you got time for me. Just let me know. Uh, and last but not least, coordinators, you guys care about climate change too. There, we, got, we got no boundaries. So we don't care about states. We don't care about titles. We don't care about anything. If you care about climate change, join us, okay? So that's it. That's the main ask. 
Second ask is, when I, th on this I don't want is everybody, it's if you have somebody in your uh, speakers bureau who you think really has their act together and understands systems, we're gonna host, Debbie and I are gonna host a couple of Zoom sessions with them so that we can kind of pull them to make sure that that fourth box that we had on the reporting, we put valid stuff in there. So same thing, if you have somebody you think would be good for a candidate for that, shoot me an email, okay? Sarah, I see your hand up. Yeah, I mean, I, first, I just want to say this is so impressive. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing it. I know a lot of um, Elaine Sherbrooke. I know a lot of King County people are participating in it, and they love it, and um, it has energized them enormously. Um, I, I'm wondering how you started, and if somebody wanted to do a SIG on a different like core topic, yeah. how they would yeah. do that. Uh, and and Jen, so um, one, I was crazy enough to just try and go honest. I mean, I don't know how to put it. I've, I've been on a little path, started with Jennifer inviting me to uh, join a team that did kind of the first state, the, the state website you guys are looking at. Debbie Benbo, myself and Craig Lawrence built that. So that kind of was my first exposure to statewide stuff. Then we rolled over, we left Jennifer behind, but we rolled over on the foundation step and we had this project, which is unifying all the foundation websites under a common platform. So honestly, it was just kind of doing that stuff. The, I get a chance to break out of the barriers of county specific stuff. And I saw the opportunity on climate change and I cared about it and I just went for it, but it was no super plan. Honestly, we only expected maybe half a dozen to a dozen people to sign up at the beginning three to four dozen signed up and we said, oh my God, we, this, we can't do this just by, you know, getting around the water cooler Zoom and talking. And that's, I happen to know how to do the website stuff. So I started doing the website just to address the volume and we're kind of figuring it out as we go. Happy, if you got any other core concepts or anything, I'm happy to share kind of how to go about it, but um, there's no set book that tells you how to do this stuff. You kind of figure it out as you go. Thank you. I think the important piece there, Mike, is that you and I had a, a relationship already. You participated in the climate change, all extension climate change conference. So we knew who you were statewide. Our extension dean knew who you were, uh, was supportive of this effort. You're also involved in the WSU climate change team. So you're um, connected with faculty and staff from WSU and the UW around this work. So it's a bigger than what he just um, presented. He, he presented the cliff notes, so to speak. Thank you. But but again, same thing. Honestly, we didn't start with any plan to do no. this. This stuff no. kind of just evolves, right? And okay. yeah. so you dip in and try something. And if it works, you go with it. If it doesn't, you try something else. And I think for volunteers, it's important for them to have that connection with their coordinator or, or with me or somebody uh, within WSU. So we can be working together on it. Sure. Yeah. Any other questions for me? If not, I will hop off. But I, but I'm going to stay on the call. And if you guys want to just, if you know of anybody, put it in the chat. I'll capture the email links from the chat, and you guys don't have any homework. Okay. Yeah, there's if a couple not. of chats for you, Mike, that I think you're going to want to uh, grab. Okay. I will do that. Okay. All right. I'll give it back to you, Jennifer. All right, thank you. That was fantastic. So Mike's gonna be on staying mission driven in the morning too, um, to share this out with uh, volunteers. So I am going to share my screen again and move forward um, to reporting. So um, it's time to do the 2023 reporting uh, on your Master Gardener programs. Um, the data that you uh, input into the survey that I will share pieces of in just a second really helps us tell that compelling and impactful story. Um, you know, and I know that it's hard to collect data through our volunteers um, and even just in general because our audiences are so uh, transitory. Uh, so I, I just want to say thanks to each of you for what you do do uh, to uh, collect data for us. 
um, we were able to put out, I think, a pretty great um, 2022 impact report. Debbie, could I get you to put the link to this in the chat? Thank you. Um, so we're pretty proud of this. Uh, Debbie did all the design work. Um, and I, uh, we together did all the, the content, but the content came from the, the information that you provided to us in the, in this end of the year survey for 2022 and those impact reports that I asked you to do in 2022. Um, so we know that this report has room for improvement. There's a lot of things that we want to add to it and we'll have to slowly, um, build on its on on you know improving it year after year so i wanted to show you this and uh, have debbie put that in the chat in case you haven't seen it it is on our website um we've gotten a lot of great feedback on it already uh so now it's time to collect the 2023 data so we can get uh our 2023 impact report out um and this report the 2023 report will be out much quicker than the 2022 report was out. So, um, so some of the things we want to add to the 2023 information uh, are funding information, uh, program structure information, and hopefully depict how the state foundation and local foundations support our entire WSU Extension Master Gardener program. Um, and then also, I do track based on the data that you give me, um, trends around types of questions that come in, numbers of people who attend uh, our classes, our, our seminars, uh, workshops, demos, field days. Um, I track, you know, uh, data around, you know, trends and who's who, how many people are attending which types of classes. And so I want to try to include that, those things in the 2023 report. So take a look at that, share it out with your stakeholders, share it with volunteers. Uh, I think sharing it with, you know, some of the things that volunteers wanna know is that they are making a difference and that the things that they do make a difference and that will help them stay engaged in the program. So if you show them this report, um, you know, it will hopefully inspire them to uh, continue giving you the data that you need to give to, you know, that enables us to put this report together. <clears throat> okay, so it's 2023 survey. Uh, the question samples kind of fit in these categories, these seven sections. It's about 60 questions. I think it'll take you about 30 minutes to answer, um, maybe less depending on, um, you know, the, the data that you already have. Um, so, size and structure, clinic information, adult outreach, youth outreach. We ask questions about food and community gardening. Uh, we ask questions about program priorities that help us understand uh, what we need to do to improve uh, use of those program priorities. And then um, we this year are not collecting demographic data because uh, we collected it differently this year. So we're not collecting that. I, I re was remiss in getting that section out of the slide, but it is, does not be, it's not in the survey. Um, one of the things that we wanted to do is level set some of the terminology for all of you. Um, so now I'm going to, Erica, turn it over to you if you're ready to talk about the difference between seminars, workshops, demonstrations, and field days. Are you ready, Erica? Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah, so um, if you can see my screen, um, I just put together um, so, some helpful slides that will help you, hopefully, if you're struggling with how to categorize um, the activities that your master gardeners are doing. So. Um, So I just want to reiterate that we all know that Master Gardeners are amazing. And really, this is all about turning the spotlight on them and showing the world what the amazing things are that they're doing. So um, this survey is, is the tool for collecting that information. And as Jennifer mentioned, she'll send a link to the survey. 
um, and that responses are due by the end of February. It's in Qualtrics. Um, you might remember that if you are a, a veteran coordinator. Um, otherwise, um, if you're new, um, it's real easy to use. It's just an online sort of survey tool. And a pro tip that I think is really helpful is to print the survey out and complete it in writing before you complete it in Qualtrics. That's just really helpful. You have all your ducks in a row before you um, actually uh, have to start typing in. Um, and it's important that we all are using the terminology the same so that we're not comparing apples to oranges. And so um, Jennifer mentioned the survey is about 60 to 70 questions. And uh, several of them are really easy. Your name, your county, um, how many master gardeners you have and how many you trained. But then we get to the terminology where we're gonna be asked about some of the different activities. So here come the terms. Um, the survey is gonna ask you about two different activity types clinics and educational outreach events. And I know for me, I have used these terms a little bit differently than they've been used at the statewide level. And so I kind of had to do a little bit of a conversion in my mind, but um, that's why we want to go over this is that you may call things a little bit differently in your county, um, but we need to call them the same when we're, when we're reporting. So hopefully um, this will be helpful to you. Um, clinics, generally a clinic is going to be kind of a responsive, informal Q and A, um, start times and end times vary by participant, kind of a come and go style. So you can see at a festival, if you have a, an outreach table or your answer clinic at your office, those are really good examples of clinics. Whereas educational outreach events are typically more formal, they're planned, some require registration, and they generally have a specific start and end time. So the examples I ha have here are a container gardening class and diagnostic training. There are sub buckets under the educational outreach events, including classes, demonstrations, workshops, and field days. And if you're like me, you might be kind of going along doing the survey thinking that you're talking about classes when you, when you get to field days and you say, oh, I just included things that maybe were field days. So, I wanted to just spend a couple minutes really clarifying the difference between these four subcategories. So I've put together a couple icons here on the bottom and just kind of a general description. Um, classes are gonna be those events where master gardeners or others lecture um, or give a talk about gardening in a classroom or virtual setting. And the helpful hints here are that typically classes have people sitting down and typically hint number two is that people will come away from a class with clean hands. And so we've got a pollinator class here and a Zoom webinar here. Folks were seated for these and they weren't getting dirty. These were, these are good examples of classes. Demonstrations typically include physically demonstrating a garden technique at an outreach venue. Um, examples might include potting plants, but also include gardening displays at fairs, such as raised beds cold frame techniques, plant propagation, et cetera. And the helpful hint is that folks tend to be standing or walking during demonstrations and that they also tend to have clean hands. So if people are getting dirty, you might consider whether maybe that's really not a demonstration. The examples that I have here is someone is demonstrating coddling moth IPM and someone else is demonstrating garlic braiding, but there's no hands-on component to this. There's no sort of now you're going to go and braid your own garlic. These are just demonstrations. And then workshops include leading participants through hands-on activities, learning by doing. Examples include propagation workshops, potting workshops, proper planting, pruning, etc. And typically there's going to be some standing going on with this. And this is also going to generally involve getting your hands dirty. So if you um, can think back to your events where folks were like these folks here getting their hands into the, the items, then that's probably a workshop. <clears throat> Field days include events where master gardeners use a garden or park to prov provide research-based horticulture education. And examples include farm or garden tours. Again, helpful hint, people are gonna generally be on the move for these and they're gonna have clean hands. <laughs> so they're not participating and they're not um, doing a hands-on. So at the top, we have a farm tour, and at the bottom, we have ornamental garden care instruction um, field day. 
And as Jennifer mentioned, we're going to have all of these items both for youth and adult. And this is just a silly picture that I found on the internet. Um, so if you're tracking, you know, field days for adults or field days for children, demos for adults, demos for children. And then whether they're in person or virtual, and hopefully we're feeling pretty good about the differences there. Although I know some of the answer clinic folks have a question about that. And um, is there any questions that Jennifer or I could answer um, in terms of helpful hints? Tessa? Hi, Mary. Yes. Oh, oh. So is there let's someone start with Tessa. Let's start with Tessa. She raised her hand, so we'll start with Tessa. Okay. To... Um, so I have a we have a series that we often have like a couple of like it's a class we have presentation lectures things like that but then many of them there will be a workshop component portion after uh where we lead people through a hands-on activity but it's the same participants how do i enter that so i want to clarify the question so it starts with with sitting keeping your hands clean, the lecture contextual part, and then you go outside and you practice? Uh, we don't usually go outside, but there will be oh, okay. activities brought inside where participants are getting their hands dirty and, and we're walking them through it, yeah. So I would like to hear what how other people would categorize that that are in the counties and doing it on a regular basis. How would you categorize something like that? Is it a class? Is it a workshop? Is it a demo? Go ahead, Bridget. <laughs> I break it up because we, we can have really long days. And so I, I and they're typically discrete, dis, discrete topics, not always, but we uh -huh. might be composting hands on. So I will take a class that's maybe two and a half hours and I will say this was pollinator lecture. So this was a mm -hmm. um, presentation and this was a hands-on composting vermiculture experience or a demonstration. So I actually personally break it up that way, but um, I'm curious about what you think about that, Jennifer. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense when they're discrete topics. If they're not discrete topics, how would somebody, how would you do that? Like, let's say you, it was a soils class and then it was, you know, an hour worth of lecture and then you're doing the ribbon test and the soil settling test and like, is I that- I would call that first part kind of an introduction to the, the hands-on part. So I would default to- Workshop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Does that help, Tessa? Yeah, I think mine fall more into like what Bridget was saying because they're more discrete topics, but that, yes, that's very helpful. Thank you. Uh, Mary. Thank you. Uh, question, is a field tour by definition not on program property like a demo garden or program office? So I guess for a um, a garden tour, demonstration garden tour, that would be a demonstration rather than a field tour. So I guess my question is, is a field tour by definition not on extension affiliated property? No, I think it definitely could be on a field, a field a day could be on WSU property. It could be on a demonstration garden property. It depends on what's happening on that property. Hmm. I think if you're showing them like, look, this is a tilled or an untilled field, or this is cover crop, you're kind of, you're showing them something, but if you're demonstrating how to do something, like I'm gonna show you how to plant peas, and that may be kind of splitting hairs. So what but if it's just a garden tour? Cause we do a lot of garden tours, especially yeah. with um, children's groups. I call those field days in my program. Yep. Okay, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Elena. So I have a question. If you're dividing this into two separate activities, um, one is the lecture and one is the hands-on, do you count the people, the number of people twice then? If the lecture prepares them for the hands-on and it's all the same people, I would just call that one event and count them once. 
But if it's but too it be, discreet, but it would still be it would still be the hands on and the the workshop part. But if it's one event and they're there from ten to noon, and the ten to eleven is part of it, and eleven to twelve is part of it, I would personally call that one event. Okay. Yeah, I, I wouldn't count the people twice. So if if it's two discrete topics, like what we said a second ago, um, you can still say that you held a, a class and a workshop, but you don't have to say that people attended it, right? In the survey, it, it's, it allows you to not enter a total number of people. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any how, any other questions? How would you report uh, um, articles in the newsletter that appear every week to a readership of fourteen thousand a week? Uh, that's an indirect contact. Okay, that doesn't count here. I'm not sure. The survey doesn't ask for that. Okay. Um, the survey that I am sending out does not ask for indirect contacts. Um, Gary might ask for that, Alice, for his reporting. Um, and that would be, that would go under indirect contacts. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So are you ready for your quiz? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. So the top left, um, somebody we know here is Deborah is, is showing something and Folks have clean hands and they're standing. Which one fits for that? Demo. Demo, yep. And on the top right, we've got folks who are learning how to clean mason bees. So they're getting their hands dirty and they're engaged. They were standing, but they sat down for this picture. Workshop. 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 Okay, the bottom, there's just touring a, a local nursery. They're not really learning techniques per se. They're just kind of seeing things that are going on. Field day. Yeah. Any guesses on this one? Field day. Field day. And then the last one, folks are sitting in chairs and they're getting a talk on native plants held on site. Class. Class. Good job. Well, I hope that was helpful for you uh, and will support your ability to complete the survey for us. So now I want to share my screen again and move to another question that uh, might cause some consternation so we asked the question in the survey, do you utilize an advisory team comprised of WSU Extension Master Gardener volunteers separate from the foundation to provide you with advice and insights to help you navigate challenges and make informed decisions? Um, and then the, in italics, it says, do not include your leadership team here. This question is about advisory teams, committees, groups, it could even be a board. Some people call it an advisory board. So I wanna talk about the difference between advisory and leadership for just a second to help you understand. Um, advisory is you know, a select group of volunteers who represent a diverse cross-section of the whole, who have experience and knowledge to provide strategic advice and recommendations. So this is a group of people who are newly to the program, who have uh, been with the program for a number of years, who represent uh, a good cross-section of the entire group of master, guard, of, of master gardeners. Meetings that you hold with this team are for brainstorming, uh, analysis, problem solving, strategic planning, coordinator support in decision making. This group of people offers advice and insights to help the coordinator navigate challenges, make informed decisions, and strategize for success. The leadership team is comprised of major project and or activity chairs. So these people are the ones who uh, are the leaders for your entire plant clinic team, the leaders for your demonstration garden team, 
the leaders for your educational outreach team, the leader for your um, speakers bureau, that might even be inside your educational outreach. You know, depending on how you have your program structured, these are the volunteer leaders who are responsible for those various uh, activities, programs, projects that you do in your local program. These folks are responsible for ensuring that you know, the people who are serving as a part of that team uh, have has a clear picture of their responsibilities, uh, how, how the organization will work together to accomplish common goals. They focus on, you know, providing that strategic direction, not necessarily creating the direction, but making sure that the direction is being followed, aligning resources, doing problem solving, um, and living the values of the organization so everyone feels heard, uh, valued, and capable of doing their best work. So if you look at the differences there, advisory groups are comprised of a diverse cross-section of volunteers. They offer advice to the program coordinator and engage in planning. Leadership teams are comprised of the high-level leaders they're responsible for implementing the plans, making sure that those goals are being met, and they manage the day-to-day -day, um, outreach that our program does. So the question in the survey is about advisory teams, not leadership teams. Any questions about that? Go ahead, Sarah. Are advisory teams, are they a standing team with a, a single composition over a long period of time or can they be ad hoc teams that are different, that have kind of a revolving or rotating membership? Yeah, I think it can uh, be a combination of, of both depending on the need. I think it's important to have a standing group um, that is, that has terms, right? So there are people who serve for a couple of years um, and that roll off and new people come on. And it's, I think it's important to be transparent about the communication on how those people are selected and what their roles are and when they're, when their service terms. And you can, as a group, create what that, um, what that looks like and what the term should be and how long a person should serve and how often you meet. And if you're going to um, share out notes from that, uh, the, the meetings that you have, you know, you can create with your group, the, the sideboards that you want to create with that. Uh, but at the same time, it's, I think it's equally important to have, um, you know, confident confidence within the program that you can go to when you need um, very specific and advice on a hot topic uh, that you know a certain person might be able to support you with. And that can be more ad hoc. But for the purposes of, I think, the, this question, it is a team that is uh, established and maintains regular uh, meeting schedules and has boundaries around it. Thank you. Any other questions on this? All right. So then we have another question. So I said in the beginning that uh, I want our 2023 impact report to include funding, right? How we're, how our programs are funded. And to do that, we need to have um, accurate information around the money that the foundations uh, support us with. And so this is a question in the survey. Please provide your foundation's total operating budget. This is everything spent in all line items, less community grants that go to outside uh, organizations outside of the Master Gardener program. So this is really getting at the idea 
our found the master gardener foundations exist to support the WSU extension master gardener program in your local county. Some foundations give uh, grants outside of the WSU master gardener program. For the purposes of this question, please include the total operating budget, everything that the foundation um, spends, less those grants that go to outside uh, organizations. Does that make sense? Any questions? We really want to be able to show the the total dollar amount that it that it takes to run the programs and the things that we do in our across the state. And at the same time, I'm going to have um, information on the WSU side. You know, I'm working on getting those numbers so that we can show uh, how much money WSU provides. You know, in support of our programs. But I think it's important to have the whole picture. Okay. So uh, last year was the first year, well, 20, 2022, right? Uh, we implemented this impact statement worksheet. Uh, they worked great. I loved the information that I got from counties. And so that was, I essentially used these and the responses to the survey uh, to create the, the impact report. And so we're going to uh, keep on using these. These are due February 28th. And I'll get, I'm going to get all this stuff sent out to you um, here within the next day or two. The link to the survey, a copy of this impact statement worksheet, the um, including the a sample that you can look at to uh, use as a template. But these were fantastic. So it really, the top of this form um, states, you know, what is the issue or the problem and that, you know, we're trying to address here. And it can be as simple as looking at the program priority toolkit and grabbing the copy that's in there under uh, the intersection between horticulture and their priority because that's the issue, that's, where, that's what we're trying to address. Um, and then the next section, you know, what did the Extension Master Gardener volunteers do to address it? This should describe the action that the program took to address the problem. How many classes did you teach on that problem? Uh, how many demonstrations? How many, you know, how many people attended? How many, and if you wanna do it with clinic, just put in, you know, the clinic information here for how many um, clinic questions came in on pollinators or whatever it is that you want to choose that you're delivering this impact report on. And then this, uh, the third box is what did attendees learn? So hopefully you have been evaluating the outreach that you're doing in your counties and we, you now have information on what the attendees learned. It would be great if you had information on what they learned and what they intend to change because of what they learned. Uh, I know some of you collect that data and you know the, the more that we can get to, okay, I learned this, I changed my behavior because I learned this and now I'm getting, you know, five times as many tomatoes off my tomato plant as I did in years past. So that's that's what we're trying to get to is the 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 community change or the impact, the difference that um, what master gardeners teach makes on the lives of the people who learn from us. And then also. Um, you know, we need to have quotes and testimonials from attendees and photos. Um, we have, you know, we got, we did get quite a few photos this year, which was fantastic. We were able to fill out the, um, the impact report, the 2022 impact report with some pretty great photos to show what, show what we're doing out there. Um, I know that many of you um, are now being asked to 
um, put impact reports into Activity Insight, and this will be the first time that you have done that. So this is a place where uh, you can use this form and it will help you put your impact into Activity Insight. And you can use the Program Priority Toolkit to do that as well. The intersection between horticulture and the priority in the toolkit contains some research citations that you can use, which is something that Wendy, our, our Dean Powers, wants in our impact reports. So there's things there for you to pull from that will support your um, activity insight reporting. Any questions around this? Uh, Katie asked about county contributions. So Katie, that's what I will get from um, WSU or county directors themselves. So this is really just about the foundation piece. Katie is currently the uh, interim county director in San Juan County. And um, so she knows the county contributions to the Master Gardener program. So I'll get that from you later, Katie. All right, um, so next steps, uh, please do the best that you can to respond to all the questions in the survey that I will be sending out. Please uh, do your best to complete at least one of those impact worksheets. And if you do it on local food, please do another one. Um, just so we have a good, uh, you know, well-rounded, a list of impacts that I can choose from. And again, the due date is February 24th. Any questions? You just said 24th. What did I say? You said 24th. February 28th, sorry. I was looking at the floor. <laughs> February 28th, 2024, um, even though this year's a leap year, but still February 28th. All right. So thank you for your help in uh, giving me the information that I need to um, share the impact of the Master Gardener program. So now quickly um, updates. What's two o'clock? Um, so the SharePoint group is working uh, diligently. We still do not have a crisp timeline and when we'll be able to scale this up, uh, but we are making progress and I will keep you posted. Uh, Bryce, will you please give us an update on Master Gardener training curriculum? Okay, and I'll be quick. So I've spent a wonderful couple of months with a group of you, of Master Gardener coordinators. We've got Laurel, Tim, Erica, Tessa, and Bridget. And we've been doing a backward design process where we look first at the um, outcomes that we want to achieve from Master Gardener training um, and really breaking that down. Like really, what do we want people to know and be able to do by the time that they finish the training? And then we started looking at, okay, what sort of, um, Assessments like how could we how could we know if people learned what what we wanted them to learn? Um, you know what are what are additional and better ways that we could use? And then we started looking at what are the activities that we could do um, to make sure that people have what they need to learn what we want them to learn during the master gardener training, so that they can become effective volunteers. Uh, it's going really well. We've been meeting for a couple of months, and we've got another few weeks worth of meetings, and we are writing up a report uh, to inform the redesign process for it. Uh, so the products that we're looking for is an updated Canvas course, um, some shared lesson plan resources that everyone can contribute to and use in a standard format, uh, and then some short courses for green industry professionals that we can um, offer to folks that aren't looking to become volunteers. Uh, the advantages of making this change right now is that we can use the update that's been that's being made to the to the handbook, the textbook, um, and we can get all of that new stuff in there. 
we can make sure everything is ADA compliant so that it's fully accessible and um, we can make the best use of modern tools that we have now on modern technologies for recording the audio and video. Um, and hopefully we're keeping in mind the whole time that it's going to be even easier for coordinators to both rely on and know that it's solid and consistent and then also to personalize to the needs in their county. That's my update. Thanks, Bryce. The new manual, the text, uh, will be, I'm being told, will be ready for the fall 2024 training season. So it will be uploaded into the current Canvas course to replace the, the manual that you see in front of you. Um, but it will still be the, uh, the online curriculum will still be the same from previous years. All right. Um, so I know Jana. Jana, are you still on? She had a quick update for professional development. Yeah. Um, okay, great. All right. I've got two things coming out shortly. Um, I'm going to, can I uh, share my screen real quick? Sure. Okay. Um, the first one is, if I can bring it up now, come on. Say you can. Uh, I'm going to have a new set. This isn't working for me. Just a minute. When you stopped sharing, it made my screen real tiny. <laughs> oh. Okay. We're going to have timely tips this year again. Um, the topics have not yet been determined. You guys are all seeing that, right? Yep. Um, the topics haven't been determined, but the dates are. And I'm going to slip those dates up in the chat uh, so you don't have to write them down very quickly. Uh, I'm still analyzing the results of the um, survey and thank you to those individuals that did complete the survey. Uh, I'm still analyzing those results to determine what the topics will be. Um, there's a couple of topics that have been uh, specifically requested. And if you have any burning topics in the area of volunteer development that you want covered, uh, let me know. I'll probably be finalizing things by the end of next week and getting these things out. The Engaging Volunteers um, series will, oh, okay, sorry. Are you seeing Engaging Volunteers now where it has all these Zoom dates? Mm -hmm. Great, it worked. Um, there's uh, dates here for that. Again, I'll stick those in the chat because I have those dates as well. Um, those are a series of, of um, classes. And um, what I'm asking is that folks plan on committing to this. This is a, it's a, it's a sequential uh, workshop and I'm going to be using groups to, uh, to, to complete this. So I need people to be committed to being there every week. Um, it's an hour and a half. Um, a I think they're on, I don't know what day of the week they're on, but they're weekly, except for the first one. The first one is just an introductory one and will probably um, only last about an hour. It's just to give people an introduction to the to the class, how we're going to um, run throughout the entire series. And the series will end with your group doing a presentation on the work that they have done to create a volunteer development plan. So those are the things I have coming up. Um, if, like I said, if you have specific topics, <laughs> excuse me, please feel free to let me know so I can get those worked in. Mary has her hand up. Hey, Go John, I, I just wanted to um, give feedback for anyone who's hesitating on taking your training. I went through it last year, and one of your modules was on writing position descriptions. Yes. And I recently wrote a two page position description for a team I am uh, launching where I need three to five volunteers. And I got three uh, three people respond in less than 24 hours saying they wanna participate in this group. So using those position descriptions and being really detailed about what the duties will be and what's expected has really been effective. So I encourage anyone who has not gone through this to, to put it on your calendar and plan to do it. Thanks for that feedback, Mary. I really appreciate that. Um, I usually, before I teach each year, I go through and look at best practices and what others have done. And 
The use of position descriptions and the use of personal recruiting is by far best practices um, mm -hmm. in volunteer development. So, and I'm pretty sure creating position descriptions is gonna be one of the topics because it was statistically one of those items that people said they needed a lot of, a lot of assistance on. So I'm pretty sure that'll be at least a portion of one of those series. Some other things that have come up just during uh, conversations anecdotally with me, Jana, are that I have on my list for professional development. Uh, crucial conversations. I know you did one of those a, a while back. That was good. And then uh, conflict management is always, yeah. Yeah, that is, if, believe it or not, it, that one did not come out as needing a lot of attention. Okay. But I think that that could be because people <clears throat> rate themselves as really competent in that until they get stuck in a in a nasty situation and realize that they do need assist, additional assistance. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be covering that. And I do want to, um, uh, I do want to build, I'm going to build in some case-based uh, scenarios. So I may be reaching out to some of the coordinators saying, give me your worst case scenario and then using one of those. Um, I, they won't have any identifying information in them. So feel free to share those with me. Okay. Um, I see there's a request for some Qualtrics training. Um, I can uh, try to find somebody for that. I, I certainly do not want to be the one to do that. Uh, I totally agree. And uh, Debbie Bembo has been doing a lot of learning on Qual Qualtrics cool. and um, working on a variety of surveys around evaluation. And so it's slow coming uh, because Debbie's always waiting on me for things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I think uh, we're we're on a track, Katie, to get a library going for evaluating basic training. Um, Erica shared some tools with me um, that she has used in the past on Qualtrics to evaluate um, the success of Master Gardener program, uh, you know, a longitudinal um, study. And we're going to talk about that next month. Yeah. So we're, we're going down that path. It's just slower than you probably want it to be. All right. What else do I have on my... Um, uh, and diversity, equity, inclusion... Uh, I know that um, there, this team is going to start meeting again here in the next few days, um, and we'll, we'll keep you updated on what's happening with that. I'm aware that there are volunteers from a few counties who want to participate in this group, and so one of my um, questions to the team that's leading this um, uh, this or the group that's leading this team is whether or not we're ready to have volunteers uh, involved in, in the work that we're doing around this team. So we'll get back to you on that. And other than that, the next meeting is uh, February 28th. Any questions for the good of the group? Jennifer, um, there's a meeting tomorrow for Master Gardeners, is that correct? Yes. Staying Same. driven. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is that being sent out to them or is that something I'm supposed to be sending to them? So um, it's the event is on, it's an event that we created on Give Pulse. And mm -hmm. you, uh, as a county coordinator, received an email from me requesting that you invite volunteers from your counties to register for that event. It was a series of, it was one email, but there was a few steps that you need to go through to get the specific county link to send to your volunteers to ask to invite them to register. I shared the link on individual county links on uh, last week's Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State board meeting. So if you had volunteers on that meeting, they got the registration link for your specific county. Uh, I didn't have any volunteers attend that. And okay. my volunteers are, we're just using Give Pulse very basically. So I yeah. don't know if anybody will. It's it's really easy for them just to register for it. Um, it's, a, it's a basic usage of Give Pulse. And then they won't even have to enter their hours. Do you need your link, Katie? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. 
Thank you for translating. <laughs> and and I, I'll just say this, it, it, good volunteer development is, we all have busy schedules, our volunteers do too. Giving them a bump today for the meeting tomorrow would be a really good idea. Yeah, if you can send me my link, that would be awesome. Can you send her that, Jennifer? Because I don't know where to find it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just going to, it's, it, it's, it takes me about five minutes per county. And so, I mean, I, <laughs> I can, but I, I probably won't be today. My, my, the rest of my schedule is pretty booked for the rest of the day. Um, yeah, I gave you guys directions on how to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Harmony. Do our master gardeners have to register? Can they just attend the same mission driven meeting tomorrow by using the zoom link standard style and then just track their time and give pulse the old fashioned, I, it's funny to use the word old fashioned way, but maybe manual method yeah. for give pulse. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, uh, but it will make more work for Sandra Mangan, who is a volunteer who supports uh, this meeting by checking volunteers in. And so I like to protect her time by encouraging volunteers from across the state to register. So it's kind of a catch 22. <laughs> and Jennifer, is, this is the meeting that shows up in our county give pulse, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. If you go into give pulse and you look in your county website, you will see mission driven popped up in everybody's county. And yeah. then you can click on it and there is a button to share with everybody. Um, so you don't have to get a specific link. You can just open your give pulse to get to it. Hmm. Am I right about that? I mean, that's what I think. Well, as some counties were able to see it that way, others were not. Um, okay. Um, let's see. When did I send it? I'm <laughs> looking at the page right now. I don't see where there's any way to share it. Mine just popped up. Um, did it? Yeah. Jennifer, you sent the email on January 5th. Thank you, Ari. Yep, January 5th. I went to MG Chords. Here it is, putting it in, oh, the message is too long. It won't let me put it in the chat. Of course not. So um, let's see. I will look for it. I, I will just give the feedback that my volunteers don't, are not responding it, to anything besides basically entering their hours in Give Pulse. So it just might take, just those meetings might not be represented by all volunteers across the count, the state is just my feedback. Yeah. And I, 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 I know that it's a, I'm going to put the link in here for you too. Here's the link to, to the meeting tomorrow. It's the direct zoom link with the uh, meeting ID and passcode. So it is okay to attend the meeting, even though it's folks aren't registered. Yeah. It's yeah. They can get in. Okay. It's just going to create more work for Sandra. I always try to tell them that if they register, then they don't have to add the impact because it adds it for them. Yep. So it saves time. <laughs> uh, Angela and you, Caitlin, I was going to send this um, email again to the, get it to the top of your list. So who else wants this email at the top of your list? I can do that part. I'd just send it to the whole list again. Pretty easy to hit the lead. Okay, we'll do that. But so that means it's coming from the MG chords, right? Not from me. Okay, I just hit send on that again. Anything else for the good of the group? So Jennifer, just a quick question. Is this the meeting ID for all of the staying mission driven moving forward or just this upcoming one? Just one. To all check. of them. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Jennifer, can I do an introduction? Yes. Yes, okay. please do. Thanks, Jennifer. So I want to introduce Caitlin May. Caitlin is our Master Gardener Coordinator in Pierce County. 
today is her first day, so I'm sure she absorbed everything that Jennifer <laughs> and everyone presented and asked today. So please help me welcome Caitlin to our group. Welcome, Caitlin. We're excited to have you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I did a little uh, quick intro uh, before you hopped on the call to let people know your background and uh, introduce you. So. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we had a bit of an email glitch. It takes like 24 hours for it to take hold. And I was trying to zoom in on her computer and yeah, it gets a little messy, but okay. we made it. <laughs> good, good. Jim, I think you're going to need to teach a class on how to get a position hired quickly. <laughs> uh, if I could only tell you a story, if I could only say what's on my mind. I know. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and we will see you uh, on sept uh, September. How about February 28th? <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.